Hey, what's up, y'all? What's poppin'? It's D. Boss here to this video. This is what is something people glamorize that is just toxic. We love to hear about the toxicity in the world, so we're gonna hear what they have to say. I have one already, though, before this video even starts. I think it's extremely toxic how people see cute little boys and be like, oh, he's gonna have all the ladies, or oh, he's gonna be a heartbreaker. That, that is so trifling and toxic. What? You are already, like... <laughs> setting him up to be a fuck nigga and 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 th you think that's cute you don't ever hear people look at little girls and be like oh she about to be out here thought and how cute she about to have all the niggas you you don't hear people say that about little girls so why y'all saying that about little boys it's weird as fuck stop ew um anyway let's see what they have to say in this video though let's watch what's something that people glamorize that's actually just extremely toxic well-behaved children a good example of this is the American public school system and how children are taught to be compliant, to not listen to their own voices, and to be quiet. You have to ask permission before you can do anything. You're expected to sit at a desk for six, seven, eight hours a day um, with limited breaks. Um. Kids are bad though. <laughs> if, if, you don't, if you don't give them those rules, they, they're going to be running around in circles eating glue and um, slapping people. So. I don't, I don't know if I agree with that 100%, but I see I see the vision. A short lunch, and yeah, you get social interaction, and that's great, but they're just being taught to be robots. I have a 10-year-old, 5-year-old, 4-year-old, and 3-year-old, and I've had more than one person tell me, it's not quiet at your house. It's really loud every time they come over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, because I allow my children to express themselves. Children are not, I, I've seen parents who are like, pride themselves on their well-behaved child, who listens the very first time they say, hey, go pick that up. Hey, don't do this. Hey, do that. Hey, don't talk to me like that. And the child just goes, mm, yes, ma'am, <laughs> yes, sir. No, thank you. I want my child to have a voice and opinion, and they'll learn respect through. What's something that... The, see, this is why I don't need no kids, because I am I completely disagree with that. But, yeah, maybe it is more important, you know, for your kid to have more freedom. Would I want my little baby kid to have a lot of freedom? No, I want you to shut the hell up. And I do want you to be well behaved. But, you know, maybe that's why I, I, I shouldn't be a, a mom. People glamorize that's Don't actually me. just extremely toxic. Okay, this might be very unpopular, but here I go. Mission trips. They reinforce the white savior complex. Yes! They can be very Come on, humble, Korea. Degrading, dehumanizing, and Carl? even racist. <laughs> For the most part, they're self-serving and self-aggrandizing. Sure, are there some good mission trips out there? Of course there are. The most effective ones are the ones who collaborate with the local people, figure out what needs to be done, empower those people to continue to create those programs that will be sustainable long after the white people leave. Yes, Carla! Your mission trips sure do look good on your church's website, don't they? And on your own personal Facebook profile. Mm. So sweet. Mm. And you might actually be doing more harm than good to the people that you're trying to help. Because if the government is oppressive in that country, then you might be contributing to that oppression. How? By showing up and filling in the gaps that they won't. Makes it oh. easy for them to stay in power. Something to think about. Carla is spitting. People glamorize. That's it's a lot of programs out there like that, too. Y'all, please. My friend was even in one. one real quick. One of the biggest pet peeves of mine, and it comes across a lot in friendships, and it's the reason why a lot of my friendships have ended, is that people will try to call off and pass off them being a complete asshole That's for them fun. being blunt. That's and my thing is, I get the whole, oh, I like to tell it how it is type of thing, but it's a difference between telling it how it is and just completely bringing down the people around you. That's and fun. I think a lot of people get that mixed up. And what really bothers me is that, like, most of the time, these people won't see the wrong in what they're doing. And then they have the nerve to be surprised when nobody wants to be around them, like, sis. Ooh, I have Maybe a, if you didn't just point out all my insecurities. I have a member like this. What's something that people glamorize that's actually just extremely toxic? I have something to say as a Latina, and I can already hear the hate comments coming. But I cannot get behind these fucking influencers. You don't even have to be an influencer, just like any girl who glamorizes like narco culture. There's nothing glamorous about it. You're not even about that life. Period. It's the fact that you think this is like a cute way to get followers and you think it's like cute to share this with like your teenage like audience. Like there's nothing cute about it. Mm. What makes it worse is that most of these influencers are the same ones that are like, oh, I'll never go to Mexico. It's too dangerous. Yeah, you're over here fucking talking about how you're about that narco life and you're a narco wife and all this bullshit. And on top of that, can we please stop with the, oh, soy toxica. Like, 
Stop with the fucking negative stereotypes about Latinas. Like, it's not cute. Instead, use your platform to spread awareness about important issues, not bullshit. What stuff that people glamorize that's actually just extremely toxic? Office culture. Office life. Don't know why we keep telling generation after generation that the ideal lifestyle is a white-collar job where you work Monday through Friday in a suit and tie. Nine to five. It's eight to five now. They've stolen five extra hours of our week. And when you ask anybody in an office, the vast majority is like, yeah, I'd rather not be here, dude. It is the most depressing place with its fucking cubicles and fluorescent lighting and like these frumpy office clothes that you have to wear and makeup and a daily commute. Constant back pain from sitting in a chair all day. The worst part, hands down, though, is the concept of professionalism where like you can't be too yourself because getting too personal is unprofessional. And yet the only way to establish meaningful connection with another human being is to get personal. So you just spend your life in the perpetual state of small talk like, oh, yeah, the Mondays, huh? Can't believe this weather. It's just not good for you. Mm. Let's rethink this shit. She What's something that people that. glamorize that. that's actually just extremely toxic? In the gay community, how we have labels such as top, bottom, oh, first, first top, first bottom, like, it's all very toxic. Because why is sexual position how we choose to label ourselves? Like, I get it. I get it. We can talk about what you're into sexually, but why is that how we choose to introduce ourselves to new people? How we choose to try to find somebody to be in a relationship with and then if we unpack that some more it's giving heteronormative it's giving man and woman it's giving gender roles and there are no gender roles in a same gender relationship i personally believe it's a subconscious comparison to heterosexual relationships especially with the stigma that goes along with tops having to be dominant and bottoms having to be feminine and there can't be a feminine top or a masculine bottom mask and femme we all have those energies inside of us. I some choose so. to tap into them and, some, and others don't. But it's like gays have to fit into categories to meet each other. It's so irritating and toxic. What's something? I don't know if I agree with that though because I feel like shouldn't that be established early on so that you don't waste each other's time? If you have two tops and they're not willing to be bottoms at all, like wouldn't you want to know that like... <laughs> off top uh, instead <laughs> no pun intended instead of you know waiting and getting to know each other and deciding oh i like you and now we're vibing like you wasting time doing all this shit when you could have just found out at the very beginning like oh you strictly a top me too deuce I i'm gonna find somebody else you feel me so i think that might be important but you know who knows um i do agree with what he said though about um a lot of people having both masculine and feminine traits as well and i don't think you you could be like oh this dude is a bottom, so he's automatically going to be super feminine. Like, that's not how that works. But, um, but yeah. Literally, the whole self-love, self-health, self-growth, just, like, working on you. But, like, hear me out. Like, all those things are good. I'm not saying they're bad. Keep doing you. Like, keep working. We're thriving here in 2021. But a lot of people like to focus on, like, all the good aspects of, like, self-help, self-growth, self-love, all that. Like fitness nutrition um reading more books meditating amazing they're all great but like what triggers you what makes you angry why are you insecure why Ugh. naturally we want to see ourselves as like perfect and even if we don't see ourselves as perfect we don't want to see ourselves as flawed but like what's the point of doing all this like self-development if you're gonna fall into the same cycle the next time you i don't know go into a relationship or like whatever super cliche but accept yourself flaws and all what's something that people glamorize what's your that's point actually though? just extremely toxic immigrant parents slapping and verbally manipulating their own fucking children oh damn like seriously south asians watching this yeah how just much minutes. longer are we gonna keep romanticizing our parents hitting us and verbally manipulating us when we're fucking kids and claiming that it's just part of the culture. Black people do that too. It's not I culture, it's abuse. Yes! And don't even get me fucking started on how hypocritical it is that one minute they're like, oh, you gotta show respect to your elders. But in the next breath, I swear, the next breath, they're like, what the fuck are you doing, you useless moron? Do something useful with your life. Be successful. The definition of which, might I add, is by their own Eurocentric capitalistic mm. standard. Like, fucking hell, man. We always say mental health is not taken yeah. seriously enough. But maybe if we stop romanticizing literal abuse, we might make just a little bit of progress. What's Are something you? that people glamorize that's actually just extremely toxic? Oh, God, please do not stone me for this. Having kids. 
Now wait, it's not toxic in its entirety. Having children, of course, is not toxic in its entirety. There are aspects of it that are very toxic. Hear me out. Having children is glamorized and prioritized over very necessary pieces of actually raising children. People are not addressing past traumas. They're not addressing their stability, mentally, physically, financially. They're not in honest, quality, functional relationships. But all of these things are taking a back seat to the Happy. idea of bringing children into the world mm -hmm. and having a baby shower mm -hmm. and having a gender reveal and having a sip and see. Both the parents and the children are forced into this reality that they can't recreate their favorite TV family. Mm -hmm. The life is very real, but having children is glamorized. So the kids are just going to grow up, not address their traumas, and just have their own kids and repeat the cycles. That's a fact. And hey, these people will spin. They will spin. I agree with most of what was on this compilation for sure. You know, there is a whole bunch of toxic behavior out there. We glamorize so much toxic shit. I could think of so many other things. Not the top of my head right now. <laughs> but I'd definitely be on IG like, what? Oh, y'all so dumb. <laughs> this is toxic as fuck. What? This is terrible. You know, I say that often. So, um, I, I agree with a lot of what they had to say. Um, I was interested in the self-help one, though. Because I don't understand his point. Um, I think it can be toxic to act like everything is so positive and happy-go-lucky when you're on um, a journey to better yourself. Um, and I think some people may come across that way on social media who are like self-help gurus. They might, you know, make it seem like it's all a walk in the park when it's not. So maybe that's what he was getting at. But, you know, his, his wording was a little confusing. Um, but I, I do agree that it shouldn't be uh, seen as just all being super positive. You got to be happy all the time because that's not realistic at all. Um, so maybe that's what, what he was trying to say. Anyway, uh, cool video overall, though. Y'all let me know what y'all thought. Let me know what other videos you want me to watch. And I'll see you on the next one.